So this is working capital planning. We have already studied so many uh, parts of working capital. We know what is gross working capital, net working capital, positive and negative working capital, relationship between current assets and current liabilities. Uh, we know that uh, what kind of uh, working capital investment policy is good, working capital financing policy uh, is good. So we have already covered three different uh, chapters or three different uh, contents related to our course outline. And through this sequence today, we are going to uh, cover uh, working capital planning. And here you will be able to assess the importance of working capital for your firm. Already you are, are really capable enough to analyze the importance of working capital. Uh, but still we have uh, outlined here to identify the differences among permanent, temporary, and balanced working capital. On this, we have already conducted a brainstorming session where students' performance uh, were really brilliant. And I enjoyed also, I learned from you and then I participated. The third one to identify the determinants of working capital requirements, uh, to know about the techniques of working capital planning and also the methods of estimating working capital requirements. Uh, since you have already discussed about permanent, temporary, and balanced working capital, I'm just making the summary uh, that whenever we run a business firm, you know that we have some uh, permanent expenditures that we need to bear every day. Uh, like we have fixed a uh, number of levers that we need all the time. Uh, we need to pay the rent, we need to run the factory, we need to pay uh, electric bills. So there are some uh, daily expenditures, uh, short-term expenditures that really we have to bear uh, on permanent nature. So for bearing uh, all these expenditures, we need working capital and what is known as permanent working capital. But besides these, because of the fluctuations of the demand of product and services, and because of the seasonality uh, of the demand, so uh, in different period of the year, we need to produce more product or we need to deliver more product or services. And on that time, we need more raw materials, more levers, and, and we need more working capital. And that's why we have working capital, what really in, in permanent nature and some working capital beyond your permanent requirement that only depend on the fluctuations of the demand and supply. Uh, later, we will uh, discuss obviously what factors really influence to determine temporary working capital requirements. Now the question is then what is a balanced working capital? So we will move to balanced working capital a few minutes later, but before that we want to uh, uh, prove our discussion through uh, uh, a, a chart. What do you have? You see that we have a, um, a figure in front of you. And here you will find uh, that if I see, uh, I can show you drawing here, you, you, you see the line. So this is the line uh, what you have seen. Uh, this is the permanent current asset line. Now the question is why this is uh, 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 upward? Uh, why this is upward? It's because with the changes of time, with, with the changes of time, we all know that business uh, enterprises will also grow. Uh, uh, business enterprises will not remain uh, in the same position. So they uh, go for the expansion. And with the expansion, with the passes of time, with the passes of uh, uh, use, with the passes of their experiences, and obviously they need more working capital because they're growing, they're producing more, they're selling more. And that's why the uh, permanent uh, current asset requirement also grow. And that's why this is upward line. And if uh, there is no expansion, no growth, in that case, this line will be uh, parallel to the horizontal line. You will find that it, it, it's, it will be like this. Sir. Why? Because there is no growth. If there is no growth, that case is your permanent current asset line will be like this. Your working capital requirement line will be uh, horizontal. It's, it's just, but when you have growth, you have expansion. And obviously with the process of time, uh, the working permanent working capital requirement will also grow. And that's why like this, but beyond this, this is basically a temporary requirement. You have 
high demand, you need more uh, product to produce. You have to sell more. You, you need more lever and more wages. So you need more working capital. And when you have less demand, uh, your working capital requirement is equal to your permanent working capital. Uh, it, it depends on seasonality. It depends on fluctuation of the demand. And also it depends on so many other determinants that we are going to identify today in this class uh, later. And then why working capital changes? Uh, uh, there are many reasons behind working capital changes. So one, we can say working capital changes uh, uh, with the changes of sales. If our sales increases, obviously, uh, we need to produce more. We need uh, more levers. We uh, need more sales staff who are involved in sales. We need more staff for operations. And these way our operating expenses will increase. <clears throat> and obviously working capital requirement will change. Uh, sometimes our policy may change. So when policy changes with the changes of the policy, the working capital requirement can change. Changes in technology when we will be technology driven, we don't need more lever. So that case is we don't need more wages. And if we use artificially intelligent uh, technology, that case is we need more uh, fixed capital, fixed capital to buy these technology, but we don't need that much working capital because we don't need that much lever uh, people uh, to process. So changes in technology also determine uh, that what working capital we need in the future. Another question is what is balanced working capital? So obviously balanced working capital is uh, one of your friends uh, mentioned earlier that balanced working capital is the optimum, optimum mixture of permanent and temporary working capital. So what is optimum mixture? We say optimum mixture is your working capital can't be excessive working capital or working capital can be in adequate. Why? If you have excessive working capital, you will face many problems. And if you have and, and, and also you will lose profitability. When you have inadequate working capital, obviously more problems you have. And we have made the summary of this. What are the dangers of excessive working capital? We explained all these points earlier, so I'm not explaining that much. One problem is when you have excess liquidity, obviously your intention will uh, be towards accumulation of more inventories. Because you have money, you will, uh, start to uh, prepare stock. Uh, you may have defective credit policy because you have working capital, no sufferings. So you can, uh, you can grow credit sales, but your policy is not that much smart to take the money back. So your collection period may increase. Uh, if 30 days is better, it may move to 50 to 60 days. So what is not good? Managerial efficiency may decline because of the reluctant credit policy, reluctant production, reluctant sales, because you have more working capital, you can bear your day-to-day -day expenditure. So you need not to be worried. And that this way you will be relaxed and managerial efficiency will decline. Growing as speculative profits. When you have money, you want to make money within a shorter period of time through a speculative process means if you see that uh, some uh, products price, may increase in future. When you think that product price will increase in future, then you will try to uh, buy all these products and, uh, and make some stock of this so that you can sell them in future uh, to make use profit. So this kind of growing a speculating profits tendency may grow what is very risky and dangerous for the business. Sir? And if, uh, yes. Basically, sir, our excessive working capital later set up is our permanent working capital ki kiya koru, sir. Our inadequate temporary working capital ki like kind of similar. 
Uh, what, what we say excessive working capital. So that is beyond even temporary working capital. Excessive means what? So your permanent working capital is there. Your temporary working capital is there. Is still you have more working capital. Then that is called excessive. So temporary working capital also you need seasonal basis. You see that at the rainy season, you need temporary working capital because you uh, need to produce more umbrella. So when I say excessive working capital, then obviously it's beyond permanent working capital plus temporary working capital. Okay, Have you got sir. the point? Yes, sir. Yes. So when we say inadequate working capital, um, it means uh, you are unable to pay or bear your day-to-day -day expenditure. And I have used the example of uh, soft drinks, that when people came to your restaurant, they're asking for Coca-Cola, and you say, no, we don't have Coca-Cola. Why? Because you have shortage of working capital. You have inadequate working capital. Your inventory is always short. You can't satisfy the people demand, customers demand, not only you. There are many other enterprises who are suffering with inadequate working capital. They are unable to meet the demand of their regular customers. And these way they are losing customers and who are not getting their target products from your enterprises. And that will not come to you again and again. And these way you will face a problem of stagnating growth. If you have a very good operating plans, your operating plans require working capital. If you have inadequate working capital, even you can't implement your operating plans. And if you can't implement your operating plans, obviously that will hamper your profitability and will never achieve profit target. It creep operating in efficiencies and day by day your operating efficiencies will grow. It's because the levers are not getting wages, uh, uh, some are not getting um, uh, their benefits, commissions and others and others. And when you are buying uh, raw materials on credit, if you are unable to pay raw materials price on time, then the raw material suppliers will also uh, be demotivated and they will not supply you uh, raw materials again and again. And your operations will be hampered. You will have fixed asset that you, you have factory, you have office, you have furniture, you have machineries, these all fixed asset will be unutilized because you have uh, no raw materials to process again. And also when you have inadequate working capital, you, our business became a stagnant and you are uh, failing to achieve profit target, you have uh, uh, operating inefficiencies, you are unable to use your fixed asset, your asset management is not good and this is reported to the financial institutions. So institutions, financial institutions will never uh, be motivated to provide you credit opportunities. And if they provide you credit opportunities, obviously remember their terms and conditions will be very tight. And the, uh, the interest rate will be very high. Uh, security uh, level will be uh, high also. And this way you will lose a lot of opportunities if you have inadequate working capital. Now we are asking about again and again, uh, uh, excess working capital, inadequate working capital, uh, balanced working capital, permanent working capital, temporary requirement of working capital. It, that is that much sim simple to determine. Or what are the determinants uh, that you need to uh, consider uh, when uh, you are going to determine working capital requirement? How much working capital you need? That also depends on so many other factors what are known as determinants. The first one is the general nature of business. If it is a sole proprietorship with small enterprises and it's a trading organization that just do buy and sell and their working capital requirement will not be the same of a manufacturing company who manufacture goods, who manufactures technology, who manufactures products. Obviously you need to consider that what nature uh, of your business. Production cycle is also important. We know that production cycle comprises uh, the process from procurement of raw materials to procurement of raw materials to delivering finished goods. So just think the time from procurement of raw materials to delivering finished goods. So there is a time period. You need to consider this time period. So if your production cycle is related to 
long time period required to transform or convert your raw materials to finished goods. Obviously, you need more working capital. And if your production cycle is short, you can buy raw materials today and process tomorrow, and you have finished goods day after tomorrow, and then you can start to sell, and then you need less raw material. Business cycle, we are familiar with business cycle as well. We have business cycle, we have intrude, we have growth, we have boom, and then we have decline. So now you see that at the time of introduction, you need more working capital. At the time of growth, you need more working capital. When you reach to the boom, your position is stable. So you can fix uh, your permanent nature of working capital. So you don't need that much working capital or you don't need that much fluctuating working capital or that much additional working capital because you know that how many units you are producing, how many units you need to sell and what profit you want to make from these selling. So your sales become stable, your production become stable and you can uh, find out a, a, a working capital requirement what is permanent in nature. At the declining stage, it is really important to know whether you want to start again with differentiation or diversification. So if you again want to start from here to grow with diversification, uh, with a differentiation, you need more working capital. And if you want to stop your businesses because it's declining, and that case is you need uh, uh, less working capital because you have made a plan to change your business and move to another business. And obviously you have to remember these upward and downward phase uh, depends. But I have already explained that you also can remember that upward phase when boom conditions prevail. So uh, this is the upward phase, introduction, growth, and boom. And then when you have declining phases started, your downsizing also started. So I, I explained this uh, uh, more elaborately because I said at the intro, intro, you need working capital. When it's grow, you need more working capital. When it's stable, you need working capital still. I don't say you don't need working capital. I said you need working capital, but you understand that the working capital you need that is permanent in nature, because you know that how much working capital exactly you need and fluctuating working capital requirement will be less at the level of both. And that is also motivated by so many other factors. You, you, you see that we are talking about a production policy. So it depends on your company's policy as well. What kind of production policy you have? Uh, uh, it depends on your lines of business. Uh, it, it depends on uh, whether your product is seasonal uh, or uh, the purchase uh, is related to certain months of the year. Uh, you buy raw materials uh, uh, using a policy of certain months of the year. So you see that it, it depends on what kind of production policy you have. If you buy your raw materials, not all the time, uh, uh, you have a fixed months, that case is your working capital requirement related to those months will be very high. Or you can follow another style. It's that uh, throughout the year, throughout the year, you can continue buying raw materials, even producing uh, products. But when you have high demand, you don't need to produce again. Why? Because throughout the year, you are producing evenly and you have enough stock. So when you have high demand, you can sell from the stock. But still, when you want to maintain this throughout the year, you want to produce evenly, you want to buy raw materials evenly and <clears throat> you want to grow your stock, you need more working capital. Credit policy is also important. Credit policy. So when we talk about credit policy, don't consider that it's your own credit policy only. Yes, you are producing, you are selling, so you are selling on credit. Your own credit policy is all right. So you need to shave your credit policy that you are selling on credit for how many days? It is for 30 days, it is for 40 days, it is for 60 days. And what terms and conditions you have, if anybody refunded, if anybody paid within 30 days, whether they will get discount or not. If uh, you give them 60 days credit, then what is the additional charges you are getting? All this you need to consider. 
So, but this is absolutely your credit policy. But same time, you are also under others credit policy. When you are going to buy raw materials from others, then you need to follow your supplier's credit terms and conditions. So how much working capital you need, it depends not only on your credit policy to sell, it also depends on your supplier's credit policy. That for how many days they are providing you raw materials and others. If they provide you for 60 days and you can make the sale for 40 days, so you see that you can make, you can convert uh, your credit sales to cash by 40 days. You are in a good condition because you can sell, you can have cash, and that cash you can use to pay your raw materials prices. But if both are very tight. You are getting 50 days credit, and also you are getting money from your uh, receivables, your your debtors uh, within 50 days. So 50 50, both are equal. So when both are equal, you are on risk. Even sometimes if your operations are not good, your management team members are not good, that case is it will be negative. Uh, you are getting 50 days credit, but you are unable to get money uh, even 60 days. So what will happen, you see, you need working capital more because your credit policy is not good, your staffs are not doing well, even your operations management is not good. Some other points also uh, influences our uh, uh, determination of working capital requirements. So that's why we say these are the determinants, growth and expansion. So we know that if a company grows, obviously it is logical to expect that a large number of working capital will be required. Now we're talking about so many times raw materials, but we then say availability of raw materials. That is also important for a, a policymaker, especially for the finance people who made the financial plan for the, uh, uh, for, the, for the whole year for the organization. So you need to consider these kind of determinants as well. Availability of raw materials. If raw materials are very much available, what do you think? Do you need enough cash? Do you need much more cash? When raw materials are available everywhere, there are many suppliers. What do you think? Enough cash is fine. So when there is a, uh, a, a shortage of raw materials or less suppliers of raw materials, then how much working capital you need? You need to use working capital to book the raw materials because uh, you need to pay even advance. You need to pay booking money for raw materials. Profit level is also a fact. Why? Just think if you have a good profit, what do you think? Do you have enough cash or not? I have yes. enough cash. Enough, enough cash. cash. And if you have less profit? Low cash. So what time you need more working capital? When you are in a position of good profit or you are in a position of less profit? Less profit. And less profit. So your profitability, your profitability is also important. Your profitability determines that whether you need more working capital or less working capital. Level of taxes. If you have to pay high tax, 40% tax on profit, what will happen? Your working capital requirement will increase or decrease? So decrease. No, your working capital requirement will increase because you are losing money on tax. You have to pay tax. So when you have to pay tax, you need more cash. You see, you need more current asset. If you don't have more current asset, how can you pay tax? And same with dividend policy. You, dividend policy, do you understand dividend policy? Dividend policy, the company needs to uh, declare that uh, uh, what percent of their earnings they're going to declare dividend. And if they declare, first question is whether they will declare dividend or not. If they declare dividend, then the second question is whether the dividend will be paid on cash or on a stock. If dividend will be paid on cash, then what will happen? Your cash requirement will increase or cash requirement will decrease? Increase. Increase. Cash requirement will increase. 
So that also influences your working capital. Price level changes. Certainly the price level changes, raw materials price changes, electricity bill changes, water bill changes, telephone bill changes. What do you think? This change will, you have no control on this. You see, you have no control on this, but your working capital requirement will change or not? Or changes, sir. Changes. Now you are starting a lot. You are, you are starting business. And after starting business, if you are not good at all here, if you have less operating efficiency, if your managers are not good, if they're unable to control waste, if they're unable to control overhead, even though they're on a control, so because of operating efficiency, working capital requirement will increase or decrease. So operating efficiency is also important. Now, what are the methods of estimating working capital? And we have already learned about determining gross working capital, net working capital. Uh, we have already determined operating cycle. Can you remember operating cycle, accounts, receivable yes. period? Yes. Uh, uh, accounts payable period, and then cash cycle. These all are related to estimating working capital requirements. So that's why the first point is operating cycle. I have written previously discussed. And besides these also, we follow some other standards, some other uh, uh, methods of estimating working capital. One is called current assets holding period. That is also related to operating cycle basically, because uh, your working capital requirement is also related to current assets holding period, cash. How many days you are keeping in your desk, in your current account? Inventory, how many days uh, required to transform to sell? How the inventory Account receivable, how many days it takes uh, to convert to cash? So you see that. So current assets holding period is 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 related to uh, estimation of working capital requirements. Some organizations they also use ratio of sales. Ratio of sales means they have a policy. They say the twenty percent of sales will be our working capital. You see what a policy. So they have they have a policy. They have made a percentage of sales. So if sales grow, working capital requirement grows or decrease? Grows. Grows because 20% is fixed. They say ratio of sales. They say 30% of sales will be working capital. So sales grow, they again uh, uh, maintain 30% of sales. This is also interesting uh, methods of estimating working capital. Uh, some other organization, uh, they, they maintain a ratio of fixed asset. They say uh, working capital will be a certain percent of fixed assets. So that case is also land, building, machineries, all the fixed asset they have. So they have, if they have a policy that, okay, 10% of fixed asset will be our working capital. So they maintain this way, uh, their level of working capital. So there are huge discussion on working capital uh, but we are trying to cover uh, only those parts uh, that are very essential uh, for our development, for our academic development, and also uh, for understanding exactly uh, what subject matters we need to consider while we want to go for working capital planning.